This video will give you an example of how to process your basketball data. First, make sure you know where you have saved the text file exported from Capstone software. Next, open up a blank workbook in Microsoft Excel. Go to File, open and navigate to the folder where the text file is. Make sure that the file is displayed by selecting Display All Files. Then go to the file, open Now select Delimited by Tab and Finish. Make sure at this point to save this file as a standard new workbook. Never overwrite the original text file. Notice I have saved the file as a different one as to not overwrite the original. To clean up your file to process one ball at a time, make sure you know which run number, which ball, and what mass you have. In this demonstration, I will use run 23 for the well inflated ball at 612 grams. To clean up the columns that I don't need, I shift, click, hold, drag the columns I don't need. Right click, delete entire column. At this point, check that the runs are sensible. The first column should be time in 0 0.05 second increments. The second column should be position starting right around the 20 centimeter mark. But scrolling down, you will see it increase periodically to about 1.2 meters upon each bounce repeatedly. Velocity will start with a blank cell, start of zero while the ball is held, but upon the drop it will increase away from the motion detector. Upon the bounce, it should reverse to negative numbers. The acceleration will start with two empty cells, be very near zero afterwards while the ball is held. But upon the drop, it should switch to near 9.8 meters per second squared. On the bounce, it will have a high negative number before returning it to the air at which point its acceleration should be near 9.8 meters per second squared. We will now calibrate the position function. For that, we need to know where the floor is. The floor is at the position numbers upon each bounce. To calculate this, we will take an average by typing equal sign average open parentheses, scroll down and look for the five maxima for the first five bounces. Click one, 
comma, scroll down, click the second one, comma, click the third one, comma, fourth one, comma, and the fifth one. Close the parentheses. Don't forget to save. We will now calculate calibrated height. Make sure that your calculation start in the same row as your position function. In my case, row 3. The formula is equal sign, click on the calibration position, minus the position from the same row. Make sure it is the same row. Enter. But go back to the same cell because we need an absolute reference, specifically for your calibration position. To do that, click on the cell, go to the formula bar, and put a dollar sign in front of the letter and the number of the reference to the calibration position only. You do not need to put the dollar sign for the position reference. Press enter. To copy this function down, click on the cell, click on the lower right corner, click, hold, drag it down all the way through your data. You can check whether you've done this correctly by seeing that your initial hold position should be very near 1 meter and upon each drop it should have a minimum very near 0 on the first, second, third, fourth and fifth bounce. Because velocity is just the change in height over time, we merely need to flip it for a positive y coordinate upward. To do that, the formula is equal sign minus and select the velocity from the same row. Make sure it's the same row even though the first row is blank. Press enter. For acceleration it is the same. Equal sign negative, select acceleration from the same row, press enter, then select calibrated velocity and acceleration together, click, hold and drag the lower right corner for both. To check that you have done this correctly, for velocity, and acceleration, they should start relatively near zero. When the drop begins in the position column, notice that velocity should be negative and increasing before switching to positive and still decreasing and decreasing upon the rise of the ball for acceleration upon the drop 
it should very quickly go to about negative 9.8 meters per second squared upon the bounce now it should be positive its previous bounce value and right after the bounce is finished upon the ball returning to free fall rising or dropping it should return to about negative 9.8 meters per second squared for kinetic energy remember that the formula is one half mv squared to enter this you need to remind yourself what was the mass of the ball convert it to kilograms and enter the formula equals sign 0 0.5 times the mass of the ball in kilograms times the velocity squared enter for potential energy the formula is mgh equal sign the mass in kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times the calibrated height enter total mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy so the formula is equal sign select the kinetic energy from the same row plus the potential energy from the same row enter and now you are ready to select all three uh, cells click hold and drag the lower right corner for calculation of all three values don't forget to save your file